All right, guys, welcome to my office. We're going to do a little lunchtime work here on this uh, Texas junk pile. You can see that there's some stuff coming together. I'm happy with the way the neck and the matchbooking worked out. Um, there's an episode right up there right about now about how to take standard size matchbooks and digitize them and widen them out so they spit, fit, not spit, fit specifically. Well, look, there's a drilling rig. That goes with Texas. Anyway, oh, and there's an Anadarko base, and that goes with oil field, which goes with Texas, right? So anyway, back to reality. We did the episode about matchbooking, and now um, we've fixed up this headstock pretty well. I like pretty good well. I like that. Oh, there's some chick flick teal right there, right? Got to have that. But now... We're getting down into this part and we've got a couple issues here. There used to be a switch right here and somebody filled it and then they tried to the hide the wood patch here with a sticker of a mouse or something and we're going to we're going to do something a little bit different there in honor of Lagrange, Texas. Um, but there are some holes in this guitar and I named my I don't know what you call it uh, attempt at luthierism or whatever <laughs> Paul Miro junk pile guitars because yeah they're junk piles I'm not representing myself as Fender or Gibson or Taylor or who am I forgetting Mark Martwin yeah no so if there's a hole in the guitar that I need to fix I'm going to make sure that you know there was a hole in the guitar and how I fix it well, we got some plugging to do here but there is an issue down here. You see this tailpiece, this trapeze? Well, guess what? It's been fixed a couple other times, and this is what we're going to focus on in this episode. There's a reason why this is failing, and there's a reason why we're not going to do the same thing over and over and expect anything other than failure. So let's take a look at how we can fix this. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk to you about is if you have a hole that you need to fill here like so, um, you can get some doweling material and then you just cut it down and make a plug out of it. And then, like I said, I want people to know that number one, if somebody ever gets a hold of this guitar and wants to put whatever was there there again you just simply can tap this out and it's not impossible to get to but i don't try to hide things i just get this and get some uh burnt orange which is the color of yeah go longhorns hook them horns and then everybody knows it was there if i go up to my headstock and make it into a four string when it was a six string you're going to see this kind of stuff so you simply take some doweling material and do that with it. I'm going to do that with a couple of these holes over here. There's going to be a piezo and a coil, right? And there's going to be a volume control for each. I'm going to start giving shout outs to these people that make these odd colored stuff because I like the way um, these knobs are going to look on here. But anyway, plugging these up is pretty simple. Um, but there's a structural issue I want to talk to you about. I want to talk to you about this repair first. As long as I've cut this down to size, and everything's pretty smooth there really is no loading on this per se meaning stress other than me pushing on it with something or something there is really no load that's going to be put on this so what ends up happening is the glue that I've used here um, there's going to be an interface between this kind of wood and this kind of wood in the center so anytime there's an interface of something that's different and now we've got a layer of glue so what's really dependent here is the strength of the glue so if i start pushing on this or doing stuff um, yeah it could fail but other than that the likelihood of this failing due to some stress or structure issue is almost non-existent it's a little bit different back here on the tailpiece and let's talk about why okay i'm going to get way out in the weeds here we're going to be talking about oil fields and cranes and and god knows what but anyway let's take a look at how this works we've got this it fits on the back of the guitar and if you're looking for one number one we don't even know what kind of guitar this was so the likelihood that we're going to find one that goes along with the manufacturer's uh recommendations or whatever is slim to none and um 
like I said, it's failed at least twice before with other uh, tail pieces on it. So we're not going to repeat the same mistake. And let me show you how that mistake was made. You remember I showed you this up on the hole where the switch used to be. Remember this? And remember I told you if you glue right around here and it just fits in the hole, then the tension is really on the glue. And when you start pulling and yanking on something or shock loading something, the, the rules of the games change. We're not just sitting there with a plug in a hole now. We're talking about something completely different. The first thing I want to tell you about is when it comes to these repair, I use hide glue. No, not that kind of hide. Dude, really? That's not even appropriate anymore. Anyway, hide glue. And what ends up happening is if you heat this stuff up, it will work loose. So you can reverse repairs or do whatever you want so if you use it in this area you might be able to take a a, a heat gun and do whatever but um, when we start looking at this we want to remember that this here supports something that gets pulled up like this and um, it's tension the strings are tensioned across the bridge now I'm known to use sometimes strings up to 60 gauge which is very heavy that's almost like a light bass string so you got a lot of tension pulling up coming off of here and then lifting this up and you see without this being tied down watch what happens when I raise it watch the reaction because this is like a teeter-totter here the fat kids gonna jump off the teeter-totter and the other kids gonna crash to the ground so when I pull this up like this and start pulling out you can see where the tension is it's right there but mostly right here and guess what else we're gonna put right there every time we are gonna put a strap button right there so in addition to this stress doing this and wanting to pull this way and out we are going to put on a strap button so we're going to fling the strap on we're going to sling the guitar around and you're going to have loading this way towards the strap okay so you can have this and this so you're going to have pull and torque pulling this way and that's why these things pop loose okay so i got an idea why don't we just take some of our hide glue which is really strong and then we take this dowel right and we put this in here like this with some hide glue on it and then we we fill all these holes and we let it set up a really long time not just a long time but a really long time because that's going to make the big difference right then we cut them off and then we come along with a drill bit and line up where these holes are filled and all this is going to be hidden by this now so it doesn't really matter and then we uh, pre-drill a hole in there and we're drilling into good wood again right wrong that's even worse than drilling new holes because again going back to the example I gave here we are isolating the load that goes on this right around the edge of this we lose the benefit of all the wood and the load being distributed across all the wood we talked about cranes let me show you some okay we're fixing to get real obtuse here I just happen to have a model of a oil field and oil field let's keep it real here and oil field pump jack in my office now there is a bunch of rods that go down here down into your well there's a suction device at the bottom basically a rubber thing that looks like a plunger and when this pulls up being driven by a motor it creates a suction and the oil comes up then it goes back down and it gets driven down and pulled down by the weight of the drill string so this is how oil comes out of the ground unless it's propelled by natural gas in which time this would be on fire and you would see John Wayne show up and bulldozers with corrugated metal on them and God knows what watch the hell fighters I will give you a link right about up there right about now anyway the lesson here is about structural loading so you see this support here it's kind of like a derrick it's kind of like a crane boom let's pull this piece of whatever we call it i do not have my chick flick teal pointer with me because it would be grossly inappropriate to the scale of what we're talking about but you see there are lattice there's a lattice going on here and each one of these elements of the lattice has an important part and how the whole thing performs to handle load stress. Now, I have written 
papers about how palm trees behave under wind loads, believe that or not. Do you want to see the paper? Well, if you do, send me an email. Um, the link is below, and I will, number one, realize that you are bored out of your mind, son, but I'll go ahead and send it to you. It's quite, well, since I wrote it, I think it's good. Anyway, back to this. Let's say that uh, this is a crane boom, okay? And let's say I am picking up something very heavy. And let's say that Everything is going good, and um, uh, the load is dispersed evenly across the lattice work of the boom. Now, let's say I'm not paying attention, and I swing around, and all of a sudden, my crane boom hits the edge of the building, which is represented. So we're going, you have to do this when you're doing Tonka toy tricks. Hey, have you all ever been to Glamis Dunes? Yeah, you need to go there. So get some Tonka toys and hot wheels or whatever but anyway i'm swinging and this whole thing is very heavily loaded and all of a sudden my boom hits right there what's going to happen the load over that's being dispersed over this whole boom here in this lattice work is suddenly going to be transferred right to there momentarily that point right there is not structured to take the whole load being dispersed across the boom and the likelihood that you'll have a failure right there or a damage or a elastic failure or some other terms that I made up and wrote in that paper I'm talking to you about that increases and that's why things structurally fail now back to this if we simply put something in here not only do we lose the benefit of the entire wood body in this area which represents again the boom and how loading is dispersed but we focus the loading which is significant this way and this way on the glue that's holding this little thing in so we need to support this but how are we going to do that because this is closed there's no way to get in here we need to put a piece of something back here that we can screw into add in that we're going to have to have a grounding wire coming out of here and we cannot short of making a hole here which we don't want to do do this from here you can see where the grounding wire used to be right there you see it anyway i'm going to show you how to do this because if i couldn't i wouldn't be making this video sign so before we get into the mysteries of the universe i want to tell you that i need to put a piece of wood right here okay and i need to know where this piece of wood is going to be in here, inside of here, because there's some fancy fluting that glues this to here, and um, maybe I'll show you that. But you know what I, you know what I'm talking about. It looks like it's got teeth, kind of, like this skirt. You see this right here? Don't ask. Do not ask. You don't want to know. Um, but it's kind of fluted like that now. How do I know how wide this needs to be? Well, it, it'd be ideal if all of my screws of this were going to fit in here like that. So yeah, it'd be like that. Now, if I wanted to run it like this, that won't work. I'd have to make it a little bit wider. But first, let's talk about orientation. Do I want to run it like this or like this? Well, going back to the crane boom, you really want as much support as you can get and you want to run with the grain uh, and and this way I'd be pulling against the grain not with the grain if I pull this way this is likely to split again I talk about all that in that paper I wrote about palm trees and trees because yeah I'm an arborist by nature uh, anyway um, so I want to take as much wood as I can and run it in a way that's going to support and not focus thing so this will be the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to figure out i need to put it here and then i need to know where this lines up on here on this piece of wood okay um and i got to factor in that this here uh if it's got wood behind it that's going to foil my plan so let's take a look here we're going to take this piece of wood here and we're going to lay this over it like so, right? And we're going to put, look, everything matches up there. And you see this is sticking up a little bit here. Well, the reason for that is because this rides up 
here. So I need to know all that first. See that? That's got to be up a little bit. And the way I've got this marked out with these holes is going to let me do that. But wait, we almost forgot something really important. Okay, I want you to notice here. Is that straight? No, you see it's got a slight curve. See that? What happens if I put a straight piece of wood behind something that's curved like this? Well, I'll get another shot here and show you, but trust me, we need to do something here. All right, and that something is this. We're going to find out where the middle of this piece of wood is in relationship to the center of the trapeze, like so. Right there will be the middle, about right there. I'm trying to do a couple things. And we're going to pull that block of wood out to just beyond the edge, like so. Okay? So a little bit past the edge. Doesn't have to be that far because this part of it is relatively flat. But now we're going to take this and we're going to trace underneath there like that. And that's going to mimic the curvature of whatever this is right here. Because if you leave this flat and you put it under here like this, what's going to happen is when this starts to pull, the part that's curved will be sucked in. You will lose your ability to translate that load over a broader surface. It will focus and you'll start getting cracks and things where you are trying to take a round surface and pull it in flat. So let me show you what I did. So I took this piece of wood, I set it up on the edge, I took this marker, I went like this, and I ended up with a curvature I took and mimicked that curvature that I marked off by marking it off and see there's a slight curve to that. That matches that curve, you see it? Um, and I did that on a belt sander. Now of course I want to know where this is going to ride on here, okay, like so. Remember that? I'm going to be able to use this, this hole right here for my grounding wire to come up through off of one of my potentiometers. But I'm going to need a new hole there and there. And these, this is where either the old holes will fail and pull out, but they need to be backed up. So I have this thing ready. It's really important that I have this marked off and then it curves. So imagine you're on the inside of this. So Pretend you're this guitar body and you've turned yourself inside out. Now, that might be easier for some of you that live in states that have legalized certain substances that I'm not going to comment on anyway. But if you, right now you're feeling like you need some Doritos and Mountain Dew, then that's probably you, son. Anyway, you are now inside of this guitar on the other side of this and you are riding up against this and you are formed exactly to match this because the face of this matches the radius of this. This is beautiful. All right, I have put this here. I'm going to drill a hole right there and only right there. I don't need to worry about these just yet, but just right there. That hole is going to be mysteriously the same size as this mahogany dowel. Now that hole will be between here and here. And I'm going to take, once that hole is drilled, I'm going to insert this dowel all the way through. This is a very long dowel. See? And it will go very far up into the guitar body. Guess what? It will go so far as to reach this access port oh look down in there so when i push this through and it shows up on the inside of the guitar well then i will have drilled a corresponding hole right there that's the same size i will put this dowel into that hole like this and glue it now, of course, this will be inside of the guitar one more time with this coming through down in there and this being inserted down in here. I swear it's FarmersOnly.com again. We'll let it ring. Anyway, I will show you once it's down in there and hooked up. Step one, painter's tape. Put it right along there because there's not going to be anything right here because that rides 
right there. See it? Now we know that this hole is right over the center. So we take this for the bottom hole and we make ourselves a pilot hole. See that? We'll take that out of the way. Now we know that's there. And we're going to hold this very carefully. And bingo. We'll change out to the bigger bit. Real quick. I should have planned this a little bit better. But this bit mysteriously fits this mahogany doweling. We're going to put that in the pilot hole. We always want to make sure that our clutch setting is way low. That way this thing hangs up, doesn't strip everything out. But there we go. Like so. This now will fit right in there if we nudge it a little bit. All right. Almost forgot the most important thing. Now when this guitar's on Antiques Roadshow, uh, like in the future, and they're looking at it, how would they know that it is a Paul Miro junk pile guitar? Well, obviously, if you got a mirror and looked inside and you saw that there was some chick flick teal, then you would know. I just made somebody like $4 more than it would have been had it not had this. Man, I'm missing my pointer. Where's my pointer? All right, putting my own personal safety at risk for y'all. Look, we didn't paint this side because that's where the glue goes. You want the glue to stick it besides, you wouldn't be able to see it anyway. Okay, guys, now the tricky part, and that is I was making sure that the Palmiro logo is in the background, regardless of the shot, ready to brainwash you. Now we take the mahogany rod or dowel. You see how long it is. It goes to this section where the pickup goes and beyond. You go all the way up here. We are going to stick it in the hole that's drilled slightly but snugly the same side. And we're going to scoot it till we can see the end of it in this opening. I'll show you that in a minute. And we're going to take this curved block that we made that's going to have to end up on the back side of the guitar. And we are going to stick a little bit of hide glue. If I can get it open without tearing it up. Down in that hole right there like this. Then we're going to take some bacon flavored toothpick. And we are going to smear it around in there to make sure that it's covered good. Now, you'll notice that I've put this in a clamp. That clamp mysteriously fits down in here. Do you see that? Now, I am going to slide the rod into the piece of wood. Alright guys, I want you to see that that block is now on the end of the rod and I can move it back and forth I can spin it, I can do whatever, but what I do need to do is make sure that I mark the tail end of this right here, lighting's bad, to where I know when this end is straight up and down because I'm going to need this when I pull it in after it dries thoroughly overnight and I apply glue to the back side of this or the side that's going to make up against the inside of the body that everything is pointed the right way. So I'm going to mark that right now and then we'll wait for glue to dry. I will see you tomorrow. All right, guys, here we go. Moment of truth. It's the next morning. It's early. We pull that off. We push on that. It's solid. Okay. Now we're going to take a little bit of this tape. This is where we don't want to mess everything up. We want to get, don't want to get in a hurry at the very end. We want to make sure that we tape this off everywhere, like so. And we are going to take 
our flush cut saw. And remember, if this isn't solid cutting this off, put something inside of here forever. Well, not forever, we could heat it up with it. But very carefully, we're going to. Okay, just like a tree limb, you don't cut it all the way through because then it will tear. But nice and easy. There we go. All right, there we go. Look at that. Nice and clean. Nice and smooth. Now the last thing I've got to do is run a grounding wire through here and get this one taken care of. And then we'll put the trapeze on. All right, guys, we are ready to rock and roll here. I don't want to forget that I'm going to need to ground the strings to this bridge. So I'm going to pull this. I'm going to run this to a potentiometer. I like this pretend wire here. Now I'm going to use yellow because it's easier to uh, see inside of there than black would be. So we're going to get ready to wrap this around. But we've got our, all of our holes done and we are going to take and put our saddle on. And I pre-drilled pre that hole and I've got this one here. Okay, we're going to run those in a little bit. Make sure that's running the right way. There we go. I'm going to hold those out just a little bit. And now we're going to use our strap button here. And there's a special part that you need that's going to make all the difference here. And that is, you guessed it, a deck screw. Hey, deck screw hater. What do you think about that, Padna? Anyway, we're going to put this here like this. I'm going to put that little padding there. And we're going to stick that on like so. I'm going to run this in just a little bit. Like so. Now, I'm going to take my wire here. I'm going to scoot this back a little bit and we're going to run that through like so and we're going to wrap it around one time. I'm not going to strip these out. I'm going to run these in carefully. Look at that. It's that simple. All right, guys, there it is. We are done. I put some tape around here so it doesn't beat up the top. I know this is immaculate, right? It looks to be nice and strong. I should tie this between two vehicles and pull on it to see how it does. But, yeah, it's in there tight. Looks good. Got my grounding wire going through with some shrink wrap around it. It's tied off up here so we don't lose it. Uh, but I enjoyed this project. The main thing is when you're doing something like this, Start at the end and work your way backwards and you'll find out that this will work out all right. So I hope that um, you liked this episode. If you did, give me a like below. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, make a comment about whether you like these kinds of episodes on these kinds of guitars or whether I get back to the cigar boxes, coffee cans, and license plates. Um, one last shout out to Dex Screw Hater. Hey, love you, dude. Don't worry, Metric Hater. I'll get to you next time. And I'll see you next time.